This is when I knew it was over for Bryce Young. And don't overreact either because I will give context. But this is when I knew it was over. Me and Terrence were listening and watching this, this interview, this presser after the game. This is when I knew it was officially over. Uh, confident. Uh, draw my confidence from the Lord. So, um, I, I'm I'm very don't blessed. Don't laugh. Don't uh, laugh because then it's gonna give the uh, wrong. You know, I'm, I'm grateful for this challenge. Um, Wait, let me just relax, bro. Don't laugh. But that's what that's everybody's gonna... been pointing to. Like I've been uh, seeing so you know, many. I'm, memes. I'm grateful for this challenge because um, you know, not ideal start, but um, God is everything for a reason. So uh, I have faith in that. And, and I want y'all to realize because I, I've never been shy of expressing my faith on my platform. I, I I'm a Christian. Uh, I'm an extremely God-fearing man. Sometimes I may not talk like it. Sometimes, you know, we all have our shortcomings. But at the end of the day, that is my faith. And at the end of the day, what I respect and understand and, and, t- and choose to put on a level higher than anything is personal relationship, right? So I, I want to preface what I'm about to say with that. Anytime you see an NFL player, any, actually a professional athlete in general, they they acknowledge God um one of two times. When things are going very, 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 very well, i.e. CJ Stroud last year, and when sh- when you just don't have a fucking answer for anything. And when you're just helpless. And when you have an, a, a, a super a high level of fear of, of what's to come, of just what the response will be from your fan base. Just that to me is just pure fear. Like, and I know everybody is, is pointing at it like Terrence just mentioned or whatever the case may be. But when I heard that, I even commented to Terrence and I was just like, bro, like I say this with all due respect. Like I'm tired of hearing these niggas like talk about God without a taking co- accountability. Like, where is your confidence? Your confidence right now. Amen. It may be in the Lord, but right now as an individual, Outside of that, your confidence is totally fucked. And, th- and that is okay, bro. That is okay. But I, I knew that that was the beginning of the end as far as, like, who I had seen Bryce Young to be at any point in a positive light, if that makes sense. It was just over. Like, when I listened to that pressure, to me, it was just over, bro. He, he, he's completely broken. You can blame that on the organization if you want. For me personally, I choose not to blame the organization. Because like I mentioned on the live stream yesterday, I mentioned this multiple times. People want to talk about this organization breaking Bryce Young. And you know what? If we were talking about last year, you would be absolutely right. You would be absolutely right. But I saw Bryce Young's best performance when we were, what, 14 or 15 weeks into the season against Green Bay? He wasn't broken then. He wasn't broken then. So then we come back and we rebuild and we add weapons and we add $150 million worth of linemen up front that perform at a very, very high level the first two weeks of the season. But then we see a Bryce Young that has the inability to make the same plays that we saw last year when he had shittier options around him, whether you look at O-line or the weapons. So I don't know what is going on with Bryce Young. We alluded to something on Friday that I won't bring back up. Um, but should those rumors be true that we mentioned on Friday on our, during our live stream, should those rumors be true, I think that could definitely be playing a part of it when you're talking about a young 20, 21-year-old man. Um, I think I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know what's wrong with Bryce Young. I don't know what happened with Bryce Young. I do not believe that the full responsibility of what has happened to Bryce Young and what has he, what he has become is solely on the Carolina Panthers as a whole organization. That to me is a is a cop out. That to me is a cop out. I, I I don't like that stance. I don't like that approach that the Carolina Panthers broke Bryce Young. Because if you were if you got broken in one season then that's an inter- uh, internal issue. That's something that you have to deal with, especially when everything around you got better. Go ahead. You're dying to say something. Yeah, because I that, can't that get my shit fa- off. Go I'm ahead. just saying because that would be fair if we didn't see it happen to Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold and they didn't go off and have the seasons that they had in both Minnesota and now um, Tampa Bay. 
their situations were not similar to to, to Bryce Young. I bet I their, would argue their that their situations they were, they were similar. Their you have situations guys that came never in first round. They were no. all, both both of them were very. Matter of fact, Baker was also a number one overall pick. Sam was like number two. Sam was yeah number two, number three. He was he was a high pick as well. And uh, you know they they both of those guys. I mean, oh God, Terrence sent the clip earlier in the chat today of Baker Mayfield at Carolina Panthers practice playing D line at one point. Like, I mean, that's a troll job. That's number one. Not that's really, tr- but that was like a legitimate <clears throat> story. We talked about that legitimately on the podcast when it happened. Like how insane it was to have Baker playing D tackle. Like. That's a troll job. But it's just they go and they have Pro Bowl caliber seasons elsewhere. So we're, so we're the taking Carolina the stance Panthers that organization. So we're taking the stance that the Panthers broke Bryce Young. Uh, Is that the stance that that you're taking? Cuz don't actually I'm not going to say we cuz I'm not taking that stance. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. That and that is part of the reason part of the problem that I've always had with with Bryce Young. He doesn't have that fucking killer in him. He doesn't have that fucking dog in him. He simply does not. Things ha- you mentioned it last week. Things have to be absolutely flawless for this guy to succeed. Flawless. And even when they are flawless, because I brought up the, po- the point multiple times, multiple pieces of content on this, on this channel, even when they are flawless, when he has an abundant amount of time in the pocket and guys are winning at the top of their routes, he still has shown the inability to make the plays that we believe he could make and the plays that he was making last year. So I'm not taking responsibility if I'm the Carolina Panthers as an organization and I will not let people in this fan base take that stance because it's not true. At some point or another, you have to look at the player themselves. So Bryce Young potentially went off to Cali when they were working individually or whatever and fucked something off, and I don't know what happened, but I'm not saying that that's because of the Carolina Panthers. That dumbass jump throw that I keep seeing over the past two weeks that the quarterback school absolutely ripped him for, I don't know when the Carolina Panthers ever told him to do no shit like that, ever. And that was never a problem. He never did that last year. I, I think Ever. I think two things can be true, and I, I do take the stance that Tavian t- uh, takes because, I mean, like you said, you see that like when players tend to leave the Carolina Panthers, for some reason, it's just like they just play better, like they're just better, and it's like, and this has been going on for years and years. Carolina has known the shy players for whatever reason it may be. Um, and I think that I, I don't think that shoots Bryce any bell of how bad he's been playing. But I think two things can be true that the Carolina Panthers instill some kind of bad habits into him. The reason that that is true is because I feel like you can't say that and then also say he, he looks worse than last year because he was like we talked about yesterday. The throws that he's missing now, he was making those last year. So something doesn't make sense to the reason that there's been some kind of regression because, I mean, we've seen the same thing with Ick. Obviously, they play two different positions, but Ick had one of the worst seasons we ever fucking seen by offense alignment in my eyes. It was just fucking terrible. So I think there there's two things that can be true. I think the Carolina Panthers did play a part into the way Bryce looks now, but, I mean, as a man, as a quarterback, as the number one pick, you do have to take some accountability, and some of that stuff does fall on you. And I think that more of more of it than than doesn't. Okay, I mean, you can say that. I'm not disagreeing with that, but I still think that the Carolina Panthers had a part in breaking Bryce Young. And for the fan base sake, for our sake, I'm glad that the Carolina Panthers and Dave Canales made the decision to bench Bryce Young because I mean, the thing is, it's like nobody comes before the team. Nobody comes before the team. No matter who you are, where you got drafted. What school you came from, nobody comes before the team. And so I'm happy that they did make that decision. And Bryce may not be the quarterback for us. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm not going to go off of – I'm not going to throw the stance that I took last year on the back burner. I still believe um, – I took the stance that last year was kind of a wash because the situation was so bad all around that you couldn't really get a clear view of who Bryce Young was. And statistics prove that the offensive line, the non-separation from the from, from the receivers, all of that had proven to be true. But when you put Bryce in the best situation to where you upgrade the offensive line, you get better receivers, and then statistics prove that those guys have significantly improved their play. The offensive line has significantly uh, 
showed an improvement from the 27th ranked offensive line last year to currently the fifth best. And Bryce Young is still playing the way he he is. Obviously, there's something going on with Bryce Young, and he's just not that guy as of right now. So, like I said, I think two things can still be true. Oh, I mean, okay. I respect it. I I, I don't know. I, I will agree with the fact that two things can be true, but I also don't – I just don't subscribe to the belief that the Carolina Panthers organization – it, it, it's the, the simple f- reason why Bryce Young looks the way he looks. It's not the reason, but it is a reason. Yeah, well, you can look when, at when you can look at the, the track record of the organization as proof. Well, when people make the statement that we quote unquote broke Bryce Young, I I, I just don't subscribe to that believing to that belief. No, you, you, I don't. You help break Bryce Young, but Bryce Young yeah. also Did there has to be accountability yes. in the fact that Bryce Young, as a grown man, still like is con- like consoled by his parents after every single game. Like, and it's great to have a strong family. Yeah, I'm I mean, saying, we don't like, even have to go there. You feel me? But that's just like, you You feel me? At some point in time, you got to be your own man. And like this, you're you're at work. My parents don't come to my job and pat me on the back or give me advice on how I'm doing. I listen to my bosses. And like, this is, we're playing football, but Bryce Young is at work and he has a job to do. And like, I feel like that, is that family dynamic was interfering in, you know, his progression as a professional. Um, probably would be safe to assume that. I think the fact that the Panthers organization has a track record in recent history of ruining players would also, you know, contribute to that. And the fact that he took the beating that he did last year contributes to this weird, sporadic, you know, decision making and footwork that he displays now when he's in, li- you know, when he's facing live bullets. What if I he think just all simply these things have are true. I mean, what if he just simply that, doesn't that have it? That, that, like, that, that, that is never like I haven't seen that conversation at all. I'm just like, saying, like, two, both of those things. Not to cut you off, but both of those things can be true. But you can see that the way he's playing, you can see that there is some PTSD from last year because now he feels like he has to make these heroic plays because last year you. Like, he was trying to do that, but the shit, I mean, it was just a shit situation. But now you you see him with Tom and him trying to escape perfectly clean pockets. And I think that correlates to last year, that pocket wouldn't have been that clean. So in your mind, it's like, okay, I got to escape this shit. When in reality, you have a lot of time to throw. You have a lot of time to throw, and he's getting fidgety. He's getting jumpy. And he's rolling outside of the pocket just trying to make these heroic throws. So I think all of that can attribute to last year. And I think the same thing can be said that he's just not that guy as of right now. He's just not that guy. And that's fine. And I'm glad that you added that. He's not that guy as of right now. I will say I think that the Carolina Panthers did do him a disservice with throwing him in the fire the way he, the way they did. Like, I, I don't know if I was in the position to make that call if I wouldn't have done the same thing. Yeah. But I think that it may have been a mistake because now it's almost like you're working backwards. Because I don't, again, don't subscribe to the belief that we draft a quarterback in 2025. Yeah, I, 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 I just don't like that ideology. I, I don't I don't like it. I don't think that it I, I don't think it's the best decision to be made as it pertains to this organization right now. And, but you're working backwards because I'm gonna come right to you. Um you're working backwards because now you're gonna have Bryce Young sitting behind a veteran quarterback and quote unquote learning, but that's what should have happened from the very beginning. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's more so it's the Carolina Panthers' fault, but it's also more so of a, the NFL's fault as well because you don't really see, like, it's been years since that's happened. Like, you draft a, a quarterback in the first round or you draft a quarterback number one overall and they just sit behind the player. Like, that shit hasn't happened in a while, so it's not the norm to sit the number one overall pick behind a veteran quarterback and let him learn, let him develop. Like, that's just not what the NFL does anymore. Because a quarterback plays such a vital part into your team's success, especially a guy that's coming from Alabama who we've seen win on that level, who we've seen look really good on that level. It's kind of hard for you to draft him and be like, oh, let's sit him behind Andy Dalton. Like, you know how crazy the fan base would have been in a fucking uproar. Either way, I think, I mean, you're, yeah, you're, you're fighting an uphill battle either way. So I don't necessarily – fault the Carolina Panthers for that because, like, Dave Tepper in the organization told us, you go back to this all the time, that a quarterback was the immediate fix. Yes. And if they're telling you that, then as a fan, 
am I going to sit here and, like, obviously I would have to allow it, but am I going to sit here and be quiet while you sit the number one overall pick down for a whole year? Because you're always going to be like, oh, what if? What if? No, but I think that there was a very, I, I think that there was a very early point on in the season last year where we realized that he just may not be ready yet. Yeah. And that was when he got injured against the Saints and then sat out the following week against Seattle and Andy threw the ball 60, 60 times, but the offense looked a lot better. But it's just hard for you, it's just hard for an organization to start a guy and then pull him. Because, like, that that kind of is counterproductive in a sense. Because I guarantee you the Steelers aren't going to do that shit with Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. That's only if they're winning, though. Because they just started a guy and pulled him. Who? Today. The Panthers. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying. I mean, but in that situation, you have to. Because it's like. Right, he's been, so far he's been now. Yeah, he's been equal. We're 2-17 and 17 with the nigga. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, I mean, honestly, at this point, you have no choice. If you want to save people's job. In the, on the coaching staff, Dave Canales in particular, if you want to save a guy like Deontay Johnson contract-wise in the future, if you want to save a guy like Adam Thielen, like he's older, but Adam Thielen still has some juice left in the tank. If you want to save these offensive linemen who we know are blocking, who we know are doing their job, but you have a quarterback who's running into sacks that makes them look like shit to the media – but because it's really people who don't watch the games and who don't really know football. Yeah, it's um, not even just the media. It's it's the fan base. It's, you know, regurgitation. Yeah. That's what it is. It's if, just regurgitation. If you want to save guys like Chuba Hubbard, who averages fucking six yards a carry, but can't really get his shit off because we just turned into a passing team when we're getting our head bashed in 17-0 to in the first fucking quarter. Like, at, at this point, Bryce Young, his quarterback play, and I said this on the live stream, but I'm going to say it again. His quarterback play is affecting the livelihood of other guys on the team. And yes. you, when you got – they always say one bad apple will spoil the whole bunch. And, unfortunately, Bryce Young was the bad apple in this situation. Like, you're underperforming and you're putting other guys' jobs in jeopardy. And so that's just something that can't happen. You don't come before the organization. Like, unfortunately, you're the number over, number one overall pick, but we're not going to sit here and let you sabotage what we have going on. Yep. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. And ironically enough, before excuse me, before you even got in here and, and, and during the live stream, that was like something that I hammered away at. Like, Bryce Young at this very second is not profitable. And I said that I, you don't even have to look at it from a monetary standpoint. You just look at it overall. He's not profitable for Dave Canales because I have an owner who's impatient, right? I have an owner who's impatient. And I've seen this nigga in the last six years go through five head coaches. So you're not profitable for me with the way that you're producing right now because you're not producing simply. 84 yards in a in a whole game is pathetic, right? Not profitable there. If you look at uh, Deontay Johnson, bro, I just came out of a situation where I had bullshit quarterback play. And then the narrative was painted that I'm a diva, I'm this, I'm that. But really, it's just frustration. So you're not profitable for me from a monetary standpoint nor a production standpoint because even when I'm winning, because I just sat there for an hour and a half and watched the All-22, even when I'm winning my routes, I'm not getting delivered the football. So you're not profitable for me there. And when you have, like, veteran guys like Adam Thielen who never fucking blows up, yeah. Who never throws a hissy fit. Ever. And he's mad at you. He's taking his helmet off. Like, y'all are arguing on the sideline. I mean, everybody, like Bryce said in the uh, interview, we're competitors. That's going to happen. But you never see a guy like Adam Thielen doing anything like that. And so when shit like that happens, then that's when you kind of know that there has to be some kind of change. Yeah. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, and I, I – and. <laughs> I won't even get into, you know, Dave Tepper and how Bryce Young is not profitable there because that conversation could just go on and on and on. But, like, just understand that as a PSL owner, I was considering only attending, like, two more games, home games this year. And, like, that theory and that thought in my head, like, damn near instantly changed. Like, because I just can't go watch that product. I I refuse to go watch that product. Um, And just to go off of what you said – I personally believe that that little spat, I think that played a huge part in the decision to bench Bryce Young. I agree. Because yeah. it wasn't just Adam Thielen. Like, Taylor Moten had uh, – they exchanged words as well, Taylor Moten and Bryce Young. 
They exchange words because that shit, like you just mentioned, it looks bad on Taylor Moten because now he is, allows a sack. And that may, that may not go to the stat sheet just because of how long the play took to develop or whatever the case may be, but it just looks bad on film. So when it's time for me to re-up and they pull up, like, okay, well, right here you stop blocking or whatever the case may be, but the football should have been gone. And I think what everybody probably didn't notice, I damn near feel like I'm the only one noticed this, but maybe I'm not. Uh, I was in the 500 section, but I think the defense says something to him because when after one of the series, J.C. Horn came off the field, he was walking off, Bryce was walking on, he stopped, chatted to him for a little bit. And I'm just under the belief J, uh, J.C. Horn said something along the lines of, okay, nigga, you got to go out there and produce. We done, got you multi- we done got you multiple stops. Go out here and be a fucking quarterback. Yeah. Go out here and move the ball down the field. He and says he had a he had a small little talk with him, and I just find it hard to believe that he didn't like grill into him a little bit. Like nigga, we need you. We need you to step up in this something. moment. Right. You got you you got to fight, bro. You got to fight. And I and I know that. Don't think that we're we're trying to paint the narrative that this team is perfect by any stretch of the imagination because that is the furthest from the truth. And we will get into our our our, our game review and just talk about some of the things we've seen on film. Um, and things of that nature. But I've mentioned this multiple times as well, just talking to Terrence one-on-one as well as the live stream. Defense came up with a good amount of stops yesterday, a good amount of stuff, en- uh, enough stops to remain competitive in the game. And I think that we all knew coming into the game or coming into the season that defense was going to be the weak point. We believed that offense would be stronger, and we said that there may be games where it is a shootout, but ultimately at the end of the ultimately at the end of the day, you have to win those games. You have to win those games and you have to remain competitive. Defense did a good enough job yesterday for the Carolina Panthers to still be competitive in that football game. They did. They did. There's no way that that score should have ended 26 to 3. Because there were a couple of big stops that we got early in the game. We had the turnover after JC got burnt. Um, he then comes back and gets the interception giving the, the, the offense the football in plus territory. So, you know, I understand and we understand. I will take this time to speak on behalf of the cast. We understand that um, the team isn't perfect. But at the same time, like, the elements around Bryce Young are producing well enough for things to not look as bad as they do, specifically from an offensive standpoint. I think they have, what, one touchdown on the season? One yeah. touchdown one on the touchdown season. On the season through two games. Right, and um, a total of thirteen points in, in between those two games as well. So we're looking at six and a half points, um, averaged by the offense. That is not profitable. That's that that is not like in no way do you say look at that and say okay that's good business. We were estimating three touchdowns. Yes, a game. We can't even get two field goals a game. Right, like that 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 just simply doesn't work. I know a lot of people right now are are emotional um, about the whole Bryce Young situation. I do, uh, and I see a lot of people taking a, a, this uh, weird victory lap too. Like, and I'm not gonna sit here and tell y'all that if last year this would have happened, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I may not have been one of those people. But like right now, I don't believe that's what this organization or this fan base needs because it's coming from a couple of content creators too. Very, very strange and very, very weird. Like, this isn't the time really to take a fucking victory lap. Only thing we can hope for is competitive football. Um, and I hope that we get that. And if that's the fucking stance that they're taking, then cool. But I just see a lot of comp- – I just see a lot of victory laps that, like, Bryce Young failed or it seems like he's failed. The experiment has failed. And I told you so. And I told you we should have went C.J. Stroud. And I told you we should have went Anthony Richard. Like, that shit is weird as hell to me. And very, Anthony very Richardson weird. didn't have a good day yesterday, by the way, or for anybody watching and, Sunday. And I want to say this about the folks that you're talking. Honestly, I would have thought that would have came from you. I would have. Based yeah. off of last year, I thought that would have came from you. So I commend you for not doing that. For sure. And I and honestly, 100. he's not going to say it. I think y'all are weird as hell if y'all are thinking like that. I think that's a soft-ass way of thinking. I think y'all are weird as fuck, and y'all don't really – like, I mean, your morals and values are fucked up in my mind because, honestly – like, you shouldn't be taking the victory lap because this, as a Carolina Panthers fan, you got to realize this sets your organization back. This is not something that you should have wanted to happen. Right. 
But and the, I think that's where I'm gonna come right back to you. I think that's where they're getting it fucked up. Yeah, that's that's weird. That's very you're right. That's very very weird. Yeah, like this isn't something you should have been cheering for just to get your fucking jack off on on Twitter to say, oh yeah, I was right. Yeah, like, that's weird as hell. You're fighting the uphill battle even more now. You thought it was set back a couple of years. This shit sets us back even more. So it's weird as fuck. And then also, like I said on the live stream, I'm not gonna get on here and bash or bash Bryce because. He's a, what, 22-year-old kid, had everything at his fingertips, number one overall pick, coming from a high-caliber school like Alabama. The nigga just stepped in and lost his fucking job. Like, if we think about it, in reality of things, he lost his job. And it might be a job that he's not able to get back. This doesn't look good for anyone, any other teams watching around the NFL because, honestly, he didn't put anything on tape, really, to show any other NFL teams that he's a valuable asset. Yeah. And so it's like, I, I kind of feel bad for him. But like I said, first, I'm a Carolina Panthers fan first. And, and that's where, and that's where, like, that's the key. Yeah. That's the key. And that's why, because even before we started recording, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to bash him. Because I got some shit to get off my chest. But it's just like, when you look at it holistically, like, and I said this during the offseason, I hope Bryce Young works out. Even with me having the stance that I, I've had and have taken over the past year and a half. With the exception of training camp, right? With the exception of training camp, if you look at what my stance on Bryce Young has been, and even during training camp when you guys came, I gave a whole soliloquy about why I just believed that Bryce Young just simply didn't have it. He just doesn't have that killer. He doesn't have that dog. And the reason why I just am not going to come on this platform and take that stance as far as, like, it being a victory lap is just because, like, what does it do? What does it do? Because, okay, cool, let's say Bryce Young sits – and let's just say Bryce Young, at the end of the day, does end up starting again for the Carolina Panthers. Week 13, week 14, week 12, whatever the case may be. What does that do? So now he's missed like two and a half, three months of live game reps. The timing is still going to be off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So then we look at it. Okay, well, do we go quarterback in 2025? Uh, no, not, not for J.J., not for JJ. I think that that's would you be, uh, that would be you working backwards once again, which is something we already saw and we already see the, seen the experiment fail. So then you're considering, okay, well, do we start Bryce again at the top of 2025? I mean, I don't know the answer to that question, but it's just like all of these questions arise out of this shit not working out. So it's like very very frustrating as a fan if we look at it like in the short term. In, in the short term, cool. I think that it was best for the Carolina Panthers. I think that you'll see this offense play a lot better. I think things will be a lot more smooth. I think you'll see a lot more points being put up. But then at the end of this year, all of that shit ain't really going to matter. Unless y'all are telling me that Andy Dalton is going to give us a playoff berth. And I don't know personally if I'm willing to go that far. I don't. Not with the strength of schedule. I don't I don't know if I'm willing to go that far. I do think that, that Andy Dalton is going to perform better than Bryce. As a matter of fact, I came on this podcast about three and a half, four weeks ago, maybe five, got fucking slandered and hung from across when I said that I believe Andy Dalton was better than Bryce Young at that very, at that very second. Because I wasn't looking at the potential. I was looking at the shit holistically. I believe that Andy Dalton was better than Bryce Young. I still believe that. And the first two weeks has done nothing but prove that to me, coupled with the fact that Dave Canales and his coaching staff have made the decision to sit him on the bench for a more veteran quarterback like Andy Dalton. And I definitely want to give you your props for that one because uh, you were spot on with that. And we, well, it wasn't I, just, I definitely. It, no, it wasn't just y'all, though. No, I know. But I, we, we definitely slandered you the day that you said it. So I definitely want to, you know, I'm, if I'm going to, if I'm going to want acknowledgement, you know, when I'm right as well, I'm going to have to give you some, you know, yeah. where you're going to hate my comment. Like, I would be willing to give you those props if I come in, if, if I can see a better product with Andy Dalton, which in my mind, I think we will. But until Dude, it, I think that you're going to see a significantly better like, product. Like I said, I think we will. But until it actually happens, I'm not giving you your props yet. But if that does happen, then I mean, you know. So then all he I, has to do is throw for, for 90 <laughs> yards against the Raiders, right? Cause that's better, motherfucker threw for eighty four yards. I mean, total. I mean, if he throws for ninety yards and we only put up six points, I mean, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna be up yeah. here pounding the table that he's so much better than no. he's so much better than Bryce. But